Joining a quickly growing list of Democratic mayors from some of America's biggest towns, all digging in their heels and vowing to fight President-elect Donald Trump on his pledge to crack down on so-called sanctuary cities. Welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. The issue of immigration took center stage almost immediately after the election, with the president-elect renewing his promise to deport those illegal immigrants convicted of serious crimes, to clean up American streets, and to remind people on his website, quote, on the first day of my term of office, my administration will cancel all federal funding to sanctuary cities. Tonight, the number of those cities vowing to defy president-elect Trump has now grown to more than a dozen, including our nation's capital. Our next guest counts himself among the resistance and says his opposition to Mr. Trump has to do with much more than just his stance on immigration. With us tonight, Javier Gonzalez, Democratic mayor of Santa Fe, California, along with former Trump campaign spokesperson Katrina Pearson. But we begin with the mayor. Mr. Mayor, great of you to be here. Thank you very much. Good to be here. And it's uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, but that's <laughs> sorry, all right. Sorry, we sorry. understand it. Uh, that it's been that kind of a day. Right. Um, so explain to us. If, if Donald Trump decides to defund the city, which you get about 2% of your federal funds from, from the, or your funds from the federal government, how are you going to defy that? I mean, you need that money, right? Well, first, it's a long way before that actually happens. And I think the important conversation that needs to happen in America today is how do we go forward and how, how do we create some type of unified effort to address a broken immigration system at the federal level? It's wrong to penalize cities that have been welcoming and creating opportunities for all citizens, regardless of where they Yeah, but from. you know the beef. But it's it's also creating opportunities, it. they say, for illegal immigrants who should not be here and in many cases, in far too many cases, commit violent crimes. Well, first, let's talk about that because even in Santa Fe, we prioritize going after people that in our community to commit violent crimes, regardless of their status. The number one priority of law enforcement in every local community is to keep their community safe. You you go after the people who want to do harm, whether they're uh, documented or not documented, we're going to go after them. But, but the argument is that it's do. a magnet, that it's a magnet for would-be uh, you know, criminals because they think they have a better shot in a city like Santa Fe than they do in a city that's going to crack down on the presence of undocumented immigrants. It's an argument in false realities. Study after study have shown that uh, sanctuary cities uh, do not lead to an increase in crime because of the presence of people that are undocumented. This is a broken federal system. People who are living in our communities peacefully, lawfully, want to do so to achieve the American dream. If we fix the federal immigration system, cities won't be having to take on this position to protect our communities. So, look, well, that's true, but as you, as you know, these guys can't get any immigration reform done. I mean, that is a pipe dream. It just well, hasn't happened. It's certainly not going to happen now. Look, we have a president. That President of, yeah. Donald Trump is, is saying on his very first day he's going, to continue, he's going to cancel the federal funding sanctuary cities. But listen, but here, what people think about when they think about sanctuary cities, they think about cases like the Bolognas out in San Francisco. That, one's in, that is in California. And, and what happened to her poor family where her husband and her sons were murdered by somebody who should have been deported but was left there thanks to a sanctuary city policy. They, they think about Kate Steinle. And and how she was murdered by somebody that they the ice detainer request was not cooperated with and a young woman was killed and you can understand why americans say we're done we understand we were empathetic to the plight of illegal immigrants who come here in a well-meaning way at first but now we're done because too many people have been hurt the violent crimes are horrific uh and and no one should justify uh their those actions but the truth is, look at communities like Santa Fe, where we've had these uh, policies in place since 1999. We withered the recession with some of the lowest unemployment. We're marked as a city as, as creating jobs because of entrepreneurship. Uh, time after time, we've seen success because we've been a welcoming, diversified city that doesn't focus on trying to do the but federal how do you, government's But how do you enforce the sanctuary nature of the city? In other words, do you, do you not ask about immigration status on arrests or how, how do you enforce that? Here's what we don't do. We don't ask people what their immigration status is. Uh, we focus on trying to protect our community. Okay, so, but let me ask you that. Crimes. So let's walk through that. Sure. So then if a police officer pulls over someone who's in the country illegally and let's say he's got somebody who is, who is an illegal immigrant who has committed other crimes um, and he, he doesn't ask then he's lost a tool that he could use against this, this prior convict of deportation. Again, that's, that's not the process that happens. If a police officer pulls someone over for a, a minor traffic offense, they'll do what they do with everyone else. They'll run a crime 
a background check on him. If that person is tagged, uh, then 100 percent they'll contact ICE and they'll begin the process of yeah, but of if they're tagged, the well, if they're not tagged because he's only ever been arrested in Santa Fe and you guys never ask about immigration status, then you perhaps lose a tool to go after him. What if he loses? What if he wins the case against him, the criminal case? But you could still get rid of him. Let's say this guy's he's got five arrests for felonies, but he's got a great lawyer. He keeps getting off. Yeah. But you never identify him as an illegal immigrant, so he keeps skipping on and staying in Santa Fe. Well, once again, we have to look at the realities of what's happened. Since we have been a safe city, a welcoming city, nothing has shown that we've had a rise in crime rates or violent crime How long uh, as a result of it. Since 1999, if anything, the contrary. No People rise at all. No rise. People are coming out of the shadows. They're participating in our community. They're sharing information with law enforcement because these families want to make sure that they're living in a safe environment. Okay. So we can't go to the most negative side of things that are kind of conjured up during a, a campaign. Look, mm -hmm. it's time to govern. We're not in the political campaign anymore. We have a Republican uh, incoming president, a Republican Congress. They've talked over and over about fixing our immigration system. They need to do that first so that we can begin yeah. to move forward as a Well, country. that would address Before a lot of this. What's going on they the haven't cities. shown any ability. Wait, so I want to bring in Katrina Pearson, who's the former Trump campaign national spokesperson, along with Eric Guster, an attorney and political commentator. Mr. Mayor, if you wouldn't mind standing by well, for this debate, because I, I want to get your thoughts on it. But Katrina, his point is that since they became a sanctuary city, they haven't seen any upt uptick in violent crime. And so for them, this is not a problem. Well, it's still against the law. I mean, Center for Immigration Studies showed that in 2014, over an eight-month period, 8,000 criminally convicted illegal immigrants were released into the population. And this is the one area that federal government does have jurisdiction. It is the responsibility to protect the citizens of this country, and no one should be violating federal law. If that had been anybody else, they'd be in a lot of trouble. Eric? Uh, th this is the new civil rights struggle, and these people need to be protected from Trump and possibly his r irrational types of leadership because these people are living their lives, they're participating in the process, and are being great citizens, well, great members of our community, and we need to fix the immigration are, problem because that will give them... Some are, that's the problem. Are. Yes, but many are, and that's well, we what can, we need we to can do. We can cherry pick. We hold, on, hold on, hold on, let Eric finish and I'll give it to you, Kat. We need to concentrate on those people who are doing great things. Now, if they're, committed, if they're committing violent crimes, they're deported. But we, what Katrina is quoting on those statistics, you're talking about traffic not tickets, true. speeding violations, those types of things that are not truly bad crimes. So Katrina, that's what, what those statistics are reading. What people but like Mr. Mayor say, hold on, hold on, 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 on I'm going to give you the floor. I'm going to give you the floor. But what people like you know, the mayor here would say is when you have a sanctuary city it encourages reporting of crimes among uh... people who are undocumented who otherwise wouldn't report because they're afraid they're going to get you know deported except that it doesn't i mean the, the whole point here is the the entire rule of law is being ignored we have laws in this country and just because you haven't done anything yet doesn't mean you get to to just take a pass on that an american citizen there is no catch and release system for american citizens and to your point this is a problem because criminals have been released back into this country, as reported on Fox News. That has been shown that this administration has released thousands of even violent criminals Wait, back stand, into our population. So just stand this by, is a problem. The, the what about Jamil Shaw, his child, Kate Steinle, Josh Wilkerson? The, the list goes on. Okay, stand by. Mr. Mayor, you speak to that, the fact that uh, this is illegal, that they, this is just, you know, it's not, it's not... They've broken the law, and so how can you violate the law and just say, we're going to flout it and you can stay here? This is a broken federal immigration system that if the Congress uh, had the courage to fix, uh, this wouldn't even be an issue. So you're just the accepting is, reality is your point? The, the truth is I'm accepting a pragmatic approach, is that we want people in our community to live lawfully, to be full productive citizens of our community. Mm -hmm. and, and the evidence and all the data shows that there hasn't been a spike in, in crime rates, that people have come out of the Well, shadows. you speak of Santa Fe. We don't know whether that's true in these other sanctuary cities. Eric, let me bring you back in because, you know, the, the, the will among this particular Congress, controlled now by the Republicans, and this particular president-elect uh, Republican, is not going to be on the side of cities like Santa Fe. And so you tell me whether you think they're really prepared to deprive these cities of their federal funding. 
They're not prepared to do that. That would be a disaster for people who supported them as well as others. Now, what these cities have to do is make sure that they follow, they stand together against this type of abuse. Because this is a civil rights violation. When you're talking about people being deported who have not broken the law, who are great members of our community, and really contributing to the American okay. dream, Go ahead, it's a shame that they want to do that. I'll give you the final word, Cap. Well, look, I think they absolutely have the will to do that, considering how liberalism suffered an astonishing defeat last Tuesday. The people are tired of this. They are tired of people coming to this country, draining resources and, and everything else that comes along with it. And we have to fight for those kids like Jasmine Gonzalez, a 10-year-old right here in Texas, who was raped stabbed in the chest and thrown in a ditch to die by someone who was in this country illegally. We have to protect our own citizens. If we can't do that, then we are here for nothing. All right. Thank you all so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Also tonight, a new free speech showdown on a major college campus. See what happened when campus police showed up in